It's Late Night. We report from the studio for your entertainment with special guests, Cece and Naomi. Give it up for your host, Kaden Bolton, and his intern, Carrie Prince. Hello and welcome to Late Night. I'm your host, Kaden Bolton. Welcome to our seventh and final episode of the school year. Let's uh, hold on. Hold on. So, quick question. If it's, like, already summer, then it can't really be the last episode of the school year, you know? Excuse me. Um, hello? Hello? Uh, who is this person that is interrupting me right now? Who um, are you? Sorry, did you check your email this morning? No. No, of course I didn't check my oh, email. Okay. Sorry. It's totally understandable. Last minute decision from the people upstairs. I'm the new intern. My name is Garrett. They told me I had to shadow a real host before I could be an actual host. So, here I am. Ta-da! Don't, don't mind me, though. I'm just going to be sitting here, taking notes. Act natural. You're doing great. Okay, then. Well, let's, uh, l let's get right into it, Garrett. Um, why don't you tell me where you're from? Okay. Um, well, I don't have swipe access yet, so they just let me in the door, like over there. Okay, okay, okay. Genius moment here, but where did you grow up? Oh, gotcha. I'm from South Seattle. There's oh. this little town there called Burien, Washington. It's a real funky place, mm -hmm. but it's home, you know? Oh, yeah, no, I, I, I know exactly what you mean. I, I grew up in a pretty small town as well. Uh, it's called Enumclaw. And, and I say it like that because in Coast Salish, Enumclaw actually means the land of evil spirits. Ooh, terrifying. Yeah, pretty scary, huh? But you know what else is kind of scary? This school year flew by. Holy I mean, shit. I can't believe that we're already moving home. I know, it's totally wild, but as much as I've enjoyed my time here at PLU, I'm still looking forward to getting home and enjoying all the little weird things mm. that Burian has to offer. Like... The UFO Festival, oh, okay. or the Devil's Pit, or, or Road Possum, my favorite. Oh. Uh, what about you, Mr. Hostman? Did you crawl out of the primordial goo, or what? Uh, whoa, whoa, Garrett, please. We, we haven't called it that in like half a century. It's, it's, the preferred term is Southeast King County. Oh, my bad. Oh, it's totally fine. But yeah, no, I mean, uh, Enumclaw is a great place, but so is Parkland. I mean, I've enjoyed living in the big city, but honestly, Garrett, I'm ready to get back to that country lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? So, do you just keep the hat under the desk? Should I be taking notes right now? Yeah, write this down. Oh my gosh, write this I'm down. so sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, actually, this hat was uh, something that I picked up at Bill's Country Farm and Feed. Which, actually, was a store that happened to be in the movie, uh, Borat 2. Ooh, very nice. Mm -hmm. I can't say Burian's been featured in any films, because mm. it's basically just one long street. Uh, but we make up for it with all the cool people, like my parents. Or my cats. Okay. Or Dan the Sausage Man. Okay. You know, I actually worked slinging sausage for him for about two winter seasons. Huh. You know, interesting anecdote, anecdote but... I actually used to handle a guy named Dan Sausage, too, but I'm pretty sure he didn't own a store in Burien. For legal reasons, that's a joke. Yeah, I can't say I blame you. I mean, there's not really much demand for sausage gift boxes, especially in the summer. Yeah. So I've had to look for jobs elsewhere. I've right. been working at a summer camp with the Boy Scouts recently. Really? A lot of fun there. Huh. What about you? Uh, you know, one of my favorite summer jobs was actually when I worked as a gate guard at the King County Fair, which is held in Enumclaw, and uh, it's actually a pretty fun job. You know, people come up to you to get information, they come up to you when their kid is missing, they come up to you when they get sick from all the food, and the really exciting part, if someone gets drunk, belligerently drunk, you have to help throw them out. Ooh, yeah. that sounds fun. But tell me a little bit about Boy Scout camp. Huh. Okay, where to start? Have you ever read Dante's Inferno? Uh, yes? Oh, I normally don't get that response. Well, you know the Eighth Circle of Hell then, right? 
For sure. Mm -hmm. Well, imagine the guy who has to go in afterwards and clean up after everyone. Oh. That's me. It's a really lousy job, but, you know, someone's got to do it. I mean, the little kids there, they can't aim into the toilet even if they tried. Oh, yeah. And it's whatever, but how in the hell do those little tots manage to double-decker not one, two toilets two. in a single afternoon? And so, an afternoon later, I became a man. Huh. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty miserable job, but, I mean, did it at least pay good? <laughs> no, it didn't, Caden. No, it didn't. Ooh. Well, that is unfortunate, but I do think that I have you beat in gnarly summer stories. I'd love to hear it. Well, when I was about four years old, my family went camping in Toppenish, Washington. And uh, along the trail around our campground, there were these exercise things. And this one was this inclined push-up table that I sort of thought was a slide. But it was made out of this decrepit, decaying, splintery, probably disease-ridden wood. And my naive child brain said, you should go down it. So I did. And I ended up with like a whole forest planted in my backside and spent the rest of the weekend in my parents' trailer with my mom going backwards Grey's Anatomy, ripping those suckers out of my tuchus. But to be fair, in the end, I did get a Darth Vader Mr. Potato Head. So like, was it really all that bad? I mean, yeah, sure, it sounds like it ended well, but it still sounds like a pain in the butt. I'm sorry, I'm new here. Can we say butt on air? Oh yeah, for sure. Yes! Talk about a pain in the butt! Up top! Woo! But yeah, realistically, I'm probably just gonna be lying at home, sleeping, thinking about my poor mm. life choices oh. over the summer, so. Okay. Yeah. yeah, what about you? Oh, uh, you know, great segue. Thank you for asking, but... This was kind of a big announcement, but I'm uh, speaking of poor life choices, I will be spending this summer running for mayor of my hometown, Enumclaw, Washington, home of Mr. Hands. Uh, you know, that sounds really cool, but yeah. who's Mr. Hands? Garrett, we, we can't discuss Mr. Hands on the air. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I was just horsing around. Shh! And now, for some shameless political self-promotion, please enjoy my campaign ad. Hello, America. I'm Caden Bolton, and I'm running for mayor of Enumclaw, Washington. Did you know that only 50% of the frogs in Enumclaw are gay? Alex Jones and other health scientists say that this number is embarrassingly low. As mayor, I promise to put more fluoride into the water so that we can make that number 100. With the vaccine rollout slowing down, we have to keep our microchipping rates up, Enum Cloth. We need strong leadership to make sure that you're safe and that your every move is tracked. And that's why Bill Gates has been giving me a ton of money to make sure that you get vaccinated. Sleeves up, Eden Claw. Our education system is failing and outdated. In our geography classes, our students are being taught that the earth is round. And our history classes aren't even mentioning that the lizard people have been running this glorious country since 1776. As mayor, I can promise that these wrongs will be righted, and each and every kid that comes to Enumclaw High School will know the truth about the moon landing. The biggest crisis facing our generation is global warming, which of course is fake and is actually made up by Jeff Bezos and the Chinese Communist Party to sell you solar panels. I know this because Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton told me in the last Illuminati meeting. Together, we can make Enumclaw a better place. God bless our space laser troops, and God bless America.
This message has been approved by the New World Order Committee for Good Mayors. Welcome back, and now please enjoy our pre-recorded interview section with newly elected and inaugurated ASPLU President and Vice President, C.C. Chan and Naomi Atnafu. All hail! Naomi, CC, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having us. This is so cool. Yeah, thanks. thanks for having us. <laughs> Glad to have you. So our first question is, how did you two meet? And what inspired you two to run for office together? We met our first year. We both lived in the Students of Color Hall, which was in Stewin. Um, so we just like crossed paths a lot in the beginning for like new student orientation, which a lot of students, if you're like a first year, are not going to understand. But yeah, you would like, there would be all these events. And so we'd always be crossing paths and be like, oh, like, hey, how's it going? And yeah, we just kind of met each other because we lived like like two doors down from one another. But yeah, Naomi, anything to add to that? No, we had some mutual friends and then we just mm -hmm. met. And then, yeah, we were like super close all of um, the beginning of our freshman year. Um, we were like neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is how it went. So... I was a senator my first year and then I was diversity director this year. And I was like, hmm, like I actually really love student government and I really love the work I'm doing. I think I really put myself out there this year with my diversity director role and really got in touch with a lot of different student groups. And so when it came to like thinking about stepping up for leadership, I was actually like, hmm, I think I want to and I think I could do it and I think I'd be good at it. And I was trying to think like who should be my partner. And that was a long process of like trying to figure out um, who would I vibe with? Who can I rely on? Who can I trust? And like going through kind of like people in my, my mind, once I came to Naomi, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to ask Naomi. She's literally like a poli sci major and a like global studies like major. She's literally someone I can talk to about like hard things, rely on. I trust her wisdom, her judgment. I'm like, I definitely got to hit her up and ask. But yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I got the call and I was like, I, I think this is a really good opportunity to start getting involved on campus. Um, and we'll probably get into it a little bit later, but I was involved in student government activities and stuff prior. And so um, when she asked me, it, it, was, it was kind of like surprising at first. It, I wasn't expecting it, but then after some thought, um, it, it became like a, a really um, important part of like, a, my career here at PLU to make sure that I was able to make a difference before I left. And so, yeah, this was the opportunity that presented itself and I'm really glad I took it. Well, speaking of leadership, what has been y'all's experience with leadership positions? Uh, is this your first time stepping into a leadership role or was there something y'all have done in high school or maybe earlier years at PLU? Yeah, so um, in high school, I was also really involved in like, um, government. And so I was a part of the Nevada Youth Legislature, which is a, um, a legislature position that's appointed by the senators of the districts in Nevada. And so basically, um, each senator appointed one student representative. And so that student representative, depending on the size of the um, Senate district, would uh, come together and form a city uh, city hall town council kind of thing of youth and you would basically just hear the issues of the youth in your community um, and kind of advocate for their um, problems and monthly meetings that we had with other assemblymen and stuff like that and then you had the opportunity to draft one bill by the end of the two-year term and so we were basically preparing for two years to draft one bill for each district and then one of the bills were chosen to move on forward and uh, get presented to the um, legislature. And so in 2019, one of the bills that I co-sponsored got uh, moved to legislature. And so it was passed. Yeah, which was really awesome. Yeah. And so um, there's there's some information online about that. But that's what I worked on um, in high school. And then here at PLU, I was involved in um, RHC. And then I had some on-campus jobs as well. But yeah, that, that was me in government. How about you, Cece? I would say my like real first leadership step up was my senior year of high school. I was my high school's representative for the National National Association of the Advancement of Colored People, so the NAACP um, Youth Council. 
and it was like had a representative of each um, high school in Seattle and we would meet together and work on anti-racist work in the education system so we would go to the school board meetings and you would have a microphone and a podium and you had two minutes and there was like a, a timer in front of you and a countdown and you had to like testify to all these school board members just sitting in front of you and so that was the first time I would say that I got a taste of leadership was learning how to use my voice and finding my voice and what I really cared for, what I saw in my community, what I saw the need for other communities. And yeah, it was a really good experience. Um, it kind of started my activism journey, especially my love for like education and like curriculum, representation, all that good, good stuff. And then PLU, my first year, I, I jumped in. I was a part of the D Center. I was a Ricky Scholar. I was a, yeah, a senator in ASPLU. And I was also a peer um, educator. We like helped lead like workshops around campus about social justice stuff. So definitely jumped in. I was like, yeah, I need to, I need to do these things. Obviously, you two are very smart, innovative women with lots of experience who can come up with amazing progressive plans. Um, so we're just curious, you know, what are a couple of your highlight plans for next year? What are we looking at in your administration for next year? So something we know that all Lutes are really looking forward to this fall is just to be around community again. Um, to just be in person. So we are really excited to start collaborating with Student Life and RHA to make some really dope programming, such as ANSAC, um, such as like tailgate parties, just like have, creating a welcoming environment. I think there's an idea to like have a makeup prom for like students who didn't have a prom with RHA. Shout out to Hezzy for that idea. Um, we also have just ideas of like welcome back lunches and all that. So we really want to help foster like spaces where students can connect again and see one another in a healthy, like safe COVID setting. And then we have a couple really um, exciting ideas surrounded um, on diversity, justice, and sustain sustainability, such as implementing the Black Lives Matter at school national week of action at PLU. It's like a national thing that happens like across the country. And so what happens is the first week of Black History Month, um, there's like a different topic for each day that all schools teach, regardless of what major you are. So it's like a really dope way to like have important conversations about Black Lives Matter, about racism in spaces where you would think that it's not supposed to be there. Like STEM, for example, where we don't usually associate those kind of conversations. An idea that we had is to implement um, a way and a kind of um, it's bigger than just the cultural heritage for the food, but it, we wanted to create a more um, cohesive cultural heritage month like approach here at PLU. And so um, one example of a way that we're trying to do that is by um, partnering with the commons and having like cultural heritage food months coincide with the actual months of the cultural heritage month. And so like we could have cuisine from that culture just so that there's like a coherent understanding of like that month being, you know, respective towards that um, culture and kind of immersing students in that way. Um, and then hopefully that idea can branch out into like residence hall programming and working with RHA so that when you go in the residence hall, you also see that theme and you can carry it to like even maybe the classroom in some ways. And so um, just trying to create that coherency around campus, um, around just social awareness, I think would be really, really interesting to see on campus next year. Nice. It sounds like y'all have a lot of great ideas and a lot of busy planning to be going on in the next couple of months. I know it's going to be summer here soon, though, and I know at least Caden's going to be running for mayor of Enumclaw, but do y'all have any fun plans that you're planning on doing over the summer? Let's see. Um, <laughs> honestly, I'm still trying to get a, like a gauge of where, you know, COVID will be this summer, but I definitely have been super busy this school year. I think every student is super burnt out right now <laughs> with classes and everything. So honestly, my plans for summer is just to relax and like actually step away from the computer and work, right? Yeah, like we need to give more hype to just like relaxing and doing nothing. So I definitely am going to take time to just like go. What I did last summer was like, I just go to parks where there's like beautiful views of like the mountains and water and I just vibe. I listen to music, I journal, like I need to, I need to recenter myself this summer. It might look like that. It might look like doing like a fun road trip with my sister or something, just like get out, <laughs> you know, just for the mental health. But I would say that on top of me and Naomi are really excited to have some summer hours for our ASPLU positions and to start some stuff up already for this upcoming fall. Yeah. So like 
yeah, that's basically it. No, I second that. I think taking time to just relax and chill um, is going to be a priority. I am, I do have an internship this summer um, with PIMCO, which is a financial um, investing management kind of firm um, in Newport Beach, but it is a virtual and internship. So I'm going to be at home, which is going to be nice. I miss my family. I'm from Las Vegas. So I'm, I'm far away from home right now little homesick just a little bit <laughs> so I'm gonna be home with them I'm gonna be working really long hours so at night I'm gonna hopefully when it gets cooler outside because it's so hot in the day anyways um probably just going out taking walks to going to the park just trying to do something to like get my mind off of things and kind of just chill um, with my family I think is is what I'm going to do. And then we're very fortunate to have some summer hours to be able to pick up some exciting things for the fall as well. So I'm excited about that. Wait, so how hot does it get in the summer in Las Vegas? You know, just let me know. Very Washington. hot, like 100 degrees all the time. Oh. Like it hits 112 sometimes. Like it's hot. Like we really don't leave the house uh, in the daytime and AC is on 10 always. <laughs> You're talking to four Washingtonians here. So I think... That sounds like hell, um, but you know, those all sound like great summer experiences. And some of our funniest stories, I'm sure, come from some of our worst summer experiences. Uh, I'm sure we've all got some great stories. So we would love to hear some of your worst summer vacation stories. Um, so I get really bad allergies in the summer, especially, I don't know. I think when you get older, it gets worse. Like when I was a kid, I was vibing in the summer. Like I didn't have to worry about it. But for some reason now, I have to, like, take medicine. And if I don't, I am struggling through the day. Like, my nose is sniffly. I'm, like, it's runny. Like, I, my eyes are itchy. And I just can't enjoy being outside. And last year, it was, like, really bad for some reason. And I, even when I took medicine. So I remember this, like, moment. Me and my couple of my friends were, like, at this beach. And when I say beach, I mean it was, like, a lake. There was no sand. You know, Washington. <laughs> I'm going to say it was a beach. We were at this beach. And we were just vibing. And my nose was so bad. It was like so bad. I was running. It was super hot, you know, so sticky. I was like, this is terrible. And then I ran out of tissues. So there was like no tissues, right? And then I was like, yo, I was like looking at my friends like, do y'all have tissues? And they're like, no. I was, I was like holding it back. I was like, bro, this is so bad. <laughs> like, this is really bad. I need something. I started looking at the leaves on the ground. The leaves on the ground started looking nice. Y'all, that's how bad it was. I was like, the leaves look kind of good. So my friend was like, okay, let me like, let me go ask this family over here as a picnic because we see a stack of napkins, right? So we're like, oh, they, they were definitely, my friend goes over, I see her talking to them. And then she comes back with nothing. I said, what happened? She was like, oh, they told me they didn't have any, even though I saw it right there. And I was like, what the heck is wrong with people? So I was like, this is terrible. Oh my gosh. But anyways, it was just, I think it was just funny because I was looking at the leaves. Like I really hit rock bottom in that moment, but don't worry. I didn't. Uh, we just like walked back and thank God, like the bathrooms were open. Cause you know, sometimes in the summer when it was like pre COVID, everything was closed, closed. Um, so we just like took a whole roll and yeah, but that day I was like, yeah, some people can be the worst sometimes like me dying over here looking at the leaves and this family's like oh we don't have napkins anyways <laughs> that's my story mm, that's tragic okay <laughs> mine I feel like isn't as bad <laughs> yours is kind of like hurt my feelings <laughs> um but the the story that I have in mind or that came to mind first was um my family and I were on a road trip back from San Jose where I was born and my family lives and we were like about I want to say like halfway um, and then we had a flat tire in like the middle of literally the freeway and people were driving like 90 miles an hour like it was just boom 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 and it was so scary because we pulled over and the tire started like ripping and we could just hear like the metal hitting the ground like really fast um, and so we like like tried to pull over as like quick as possible um, and we were there for over three and a half hours just posted because the the thing that's supposed to lift the car it was a big car and the thing that's supposed to lift the car wouldn't work and like it was so hot and then we like weren't we didn't have that much gas to just be like wasting the AC yeah it was bad <laughs> it was bad um, and and I was hungry like it was just everything bad altogether. 
Um, so yeah, that was the worst. So I kind of have like um, bad experiences with road trips. So yeah. Sounds like in both of your cases, what went wrong went very wrong. But do you have any good memories, things where things went right, where things were peachy and you weren't changing tires or looking for napkins? Um, a good experience would be uh, when I was 12 years old, my family and I took a trip to Ethiopia, where I'm from. And so um, we were there for a whole summer. So it's about oh, almost three months. And it was an amazing experience. It was so enriching. I had never been there before. Um, and I really just fell in love with my culture, like all over again, like as a kid, like I wasn't really immersed um, as much as, you know, I, I wish I was, but it was a really good experience. We went on a lot of like family trips within the country, um, kind of just seeing the different beautiful things about um, the, the culture and meeting people and just seeing how differently people live their lives outside of America. That uh, was a really good experience. I, I, I loved it and I cannot wait to go back once COVID gets better. Mine's related to traveling too. I forget what it was it like two summers ago or three, me and my family um, did like a little trip like to different places in Asia. So we went to Japan, Singapore, Malaysia, and Hong Kong. And we have family in Singapore and Malaysia. But y'all, it was like, obviously like the good things, like the food, 100, like just like the views, the culture, like everything's so beautiful. And something I remember specifically from Japan, we're like, why are people so nice? I feel like when travelers come to America, it's low key tough, but like there, they're just so nice. Like, and I love the culture when they like bow to you and saying like, thank you. And they have like people working in like the elevators and like help you like press buttons. I don't know. It was just like, I know, right? I don't know. We just kind of felt like royalty there. Not going to lie. And the toilets like spray and like wash your butt, you know? So that was like my favorite experience is like just going to different countries and seeing how they treat tourists, how they like, yeah. Especially because we didn't speak Japanese. So it was, it was. It was a fun experience uh, when you go to a different place and you don't know the language, but they're still just so like patient and like welcoming. And yeah, did I mention the food? Yeah, I said the food. I'm gonna say it again. The food, y'all. It hits different and it's way cheaper. They be exploiting us in America for that food. And so when you go like Asia, it's, it's like the markets, you can like bargain. It's just like the coolest place to be at night. It's always, it's always lit. Again, thank you both so much for being with us. We just have to ask, do you have any final words that you'd like to share with the student body or, or anything you'd like to say before we leave? Just like, thank you so much <laughs> for having us today. Um, shout out to Senator Bolton, who is an amazing person in our Senate, who's always helping lead the conversation, make moves. He'd be like, I yield the floor. Wait, Kaden, give us a little taste of, give us a little taste of the Robert rules. <laughs> I yield the floor. Beautiful, beautiful, couldn't be articulated any better. But no, I just appreciate this so much. Um, if any students ever need anything or see a need on campus, feel free to reach out to me and Naomi. We're gonna do a lot of work this summer and the fall next year to really build commu um, community. We're gonna like try to show up and be in many spaces, send our senators to many spaces, be in clubs. We're really trying to have ASPLU just be present everywhere. So yeah, totally hit us up. We're like really nice, really chill. We'll definitely help, try to help our best and what you want to see on campus. Yeah, and like a, a goal that, that we kind of have too is to kind of, um, kind of have like communication and conversation be less formal and scary between like, you know, representatives, student representatives and the students, right? And so um, it, it, whatever like helps bridge that gap, like if it's reaching out to us through our personal emails or school emails, our um, our president and vice president emails, whether that's, you know, just coming up to us when you see us like in the hallways or whatever, when we're back on campus, like, please reach out to us, um, talk to us, like, you know, if you want to sit down and get to know us, like whatever the case is, like, we're really here to serve you all. And um, it would be awesome to like have that connection of knowing what's needed on campus by knowing the people that need it. And so um, we're really here to, to serve you guys. And we're really excited for next year. So I hope I hope everyone can be too. And we're so excited to be back um, on campus together in person and actually have these conversations in person. I'm so excited. CC Naomi, 
president and vice president of ASPLU. Thank you so much for being here and talking with us today. You have been an absolute treat to have on the show. Hopefully you have an amazing summer and we can't wait to see all you have in store for next year. Hello, this is Crockett Mobile. How may I help you today? Hi, I'd like to speak to somebody about my unlimited data plan. Um, it's saying I am out of data, which is kind of a contradiction. So yeah, uh, I'm paying a lot of money for this. Sure thing. If you don't mind waiting for a second while I transfer you, would you like some hold music to play while you wait? Uh, sure. Fantastic. A one, a two, a one, two, three. A school that sends you reeling from decimated deaths. Your agony and loans will kill us all. So spread green, the stocks are down, let's save far and near. Comply until we die this monetary wall. We're overdrawn, we're overdrawn. And now we're debted and indentured. Our money won't carry on. Student debt. And with your account decimated, our heavy spirits overdrawn. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I, I thought you were going to play some pre-recorded music. Oh, I see. So I take it that rock isn't exactly your speed. Uh, no, I, I like rock. It's just... I... Well, I have a whole range of options. Perhaps this is more of your taste. And a one, two, three. Elon, he can make the rockets. Elon is going to Mars. He is going to Mars forever. Inventor of the Tesla. He rose and conquered the brain. Elon conquered the brain. Elon, he will build the tunnels. Elon is sponsored to Mars. He is sponsored to Mars forever. Inventor of the Tesla. He and Graham kinda are bay. Elon conquered the bay. Oh, it looks like someone's available to see you now. Thank you again for using Crockett Mobile. Have a crockin' day. Hello. <sighs> well, thank you for watching our episode and Boy, oh boy, has it sure been a pretty interesting season this year with uh, COVID causing all these alter in alterations and things that we've had to do. I'd say, but now this bizarre hellhole of a season is finally over, and we all get <sighs> to head home, enjoy summer, relax, and prepare for another year of inevitable curveball mm. and shenanigans. That's right. We'll be back with more Late Night in the fall, but for one last time this year, stay, stay nightly, nightly loots. loots. Good show, Gary. Mm -hmm. Good show. Oh, yeah, great time. That was a really good time. Next oh. time tomorrow? Oh, yeah, same time tomorrow. See you then. All right. Mm -hmm.